Okay, this is epidemiology lecture number five about Okinawa, Japan, and Loma Linda, California. Um, so we can start out here talking about Okinawa. Uh, no, Okinawa is located south of mainland Japan, and they were famous for being almost like Shangri-La, the eternal immortals of people who lived super long. And Okinawa is very similar, of course, to Japan, but it's also different. They had a much lower sodium in their diet. They used to eat a tremendous amount of sweet potatoes, like 70% or more of their calories from sweet potatoes. Um, most of them were farmers. They often had no car and had to walk a lot. Um, they had very close-knit communities and families. They venerated their ancestors. And when you have a close-knit family, extended family and community, you have an extended social support. So that reminds me of like Rosetto, Pennsylvania, the Rosetto effect, whereby close-knit families and good social support. That was for Italian families, let's say, in the 1950s and 60s in um, Pennsylvania, Rosetto, Pennsylvania. They had much improved lives compared to demographically matched populations because, let's say, Luigi loses his job and he's by himself in the city. Then he's screwed. He has no, can't pay for his apartment, can't buy food. On the other hand, if he lives with a big family, they can take care of him for a couple months until he finds a new job. Um, so getting back to Okinawa, their good social support systems helped them to survive. You know, back in those days, they didn't even have, you know, a banking system. They didn't have much else other than each other to support each other. They ate a lot of greens. Um, they're primarily plant-based diet, probably about 97% plant-based. Ended up being about 80-10-10 in terms of carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Um, their average age at death was about 78 years of age for the men and 86 years old for the women, which is one of the highest uh, longevities of any country in the world. Um, the two Wilcox brothers uh, are from the United States, went out there with a Dr. Suzuki from Japan to study the health and longevity of the Okinawans. And the extraordinary finding was, first of all, they had five times as many centenarians as uh, America did. In addition, they had centenarians over there with zero medical problems. So these people are like 105 years of age, no hypertension, no obesity, <laughs> they're mentally sharp, so very impressive. Um, and along with their very low salt diet and this very low fat diet, sweet potatoes are very low in fat, same thing with regular potatoes, they had hardly any coronary artery disease uh, because they were eating a low salt diet as well, hardly any uh, cerebrovascular disease, hardly any uh, prostate cancer or other cancers, very low incidence of those things. Um, Excessive dietary sodium is associated with hypertension. Hypertension is associated with strokes. Excessive dietary fat is especially associated with high cholesterols and atherosclerosis in the coronary arteries and in the carotid arteries, well, especially in the coronaries. And that concept of extracranial extra atherosclerosis, especially with a high-fat diet, is sort of typical Westerner atherosclerosis. The pattern of high cerebrovascular atherosclerosis is especially associated, for example, with Japan where they eat a very high salt diet so they have high hypertension. And that pattern is associated with intracranial atherosclerosis and a higher risk of stroke. Okay, so now we're going to talk about uh, Japan a little bit. Japan had incredibly good longevity despite the fact they smoked a lot of cigarettes and ate tremendous amount of sodium, especially in northern Japan. Um, but you know, some people say, oh, well, it must be genetic. No, it's not genetic. When they moved to Hawaii and started eating a more westernized diet, and then even more so when they move all the way to California and eat a markedly westernized diet, they start taking on the same incidences of uh, all these westernized high-fat disease diets of coronary artery disease, increased cerebral vascular disease, increased uh, cancer. The rates of prostate cancer in Japan were incredibly low in the 1950s and 60s. And also of interest is, even though they smoked a lot of cigarettes, as did the Papua New Guinea population, because they ate a low-fat diet, that appears to be the reason, they had relatively low incidence of lung carcin uh, carcinoma in comparison with the USA. Uh, same amount of smoking, but with the high-fat diet, it had a synergistic effect to increase the rate of uh, lung cancer. Um, in 1985, the average lifespan of Japanese man was 75 years of age and of Japanese woman 80 years of age. So uh, quite a bit less than the Okinawans but still pretty good. Um, certainly uh, significantly better than Americans of that time, 1985. The average American lifespan in 1985 for a man 71 years of age, for a woman uh, 78 years of age. 
Average Californians were a little bit better than that. Um, about 74 years of age for men and 79.6 for a woman. California in general, at least it used to be a relatively healthy state. A lot of people were there because they wanted to enjoy the nature associated with California. There's a lot of national parks, you got the ocean nearby, a lot of places for hiking and walking. Um, you know, in terms of nature and outdoor stuff, it's a great state. Um, okay, next thing, we're now in California now with this uh, epidemiology. We can talk about Loma Linda, sort of a suburb on the outskirts of Los Angeles. And the population in particular there is the SDA, Seventh-day Adventist, and sort of part of the religion to eat a plant-based diet. And they're also a relatively standardized population, not that much alcohol, uh, hardly any tobacco, and they often you know, go on uh, walks on weekends where they get nature walks. So anyways, there's been a lot of research done. They're followed by uh, a researcher by the name of Gary Fraser who's kept pretty close data on them for many, many years. Um, the average vegetarian Seventh-day Adventist lifespan was 85 years of age for a man and 88.6 years for a woman. I think I've actually seen them about one year longer than that in this other population study when they tighten the criteria a little more on their lifestyle and habits. This is for moderately good habits. Um, and Dr. McDougall worked with them and he believes they could actually live longer than that if they really had optimal habits. That a lot of the people in this cohort were not as good a habits as one might guess. But still, for a well-documented population, these are the best uh, lifetime longevity numbers that have ever been obtained. So for a man, 85 years of age. For a woman, 88.6. And I think if a person has all their habits as good as can be, they exercise a lot, they put effort to get their sleep, um, they eat the low-fat uh, plant diet, they could probably get an average of early 90s. That's a guess, but it seems to probably be true. So anyways, that's uh, the epidemiology of these populations. Hope it's helpful.